Hello everybody, it's me, Art Dallas, and in this quick video I just want to introduce you to the tell, don't ask principle and show you what some of the consequences are and how you ought to design your objects instead. So if you want to learn more about this principle, you can go out to deviq.com, there's a brief article on it, summarizes it real well, check that out. There's a ton of other principles and patterns and things described on the site. Getting into our example right here, what I want to do is just show you a really simple to do item class and some real easy ways to manipulate its state, but the consequences of not following this principle. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this new to do item and the to do item class, I'll show it to you in a second. It's just a bunch of public getters and setters. It has no encapsulation, it has no behavior built in, but the calling code, the application logic, just manipulates it based on whatever logic should be applied. A really common thing that many system designs have is to track who the last user was to touch something. This is sort of a auditing purposes thing where you can say it was created by this user ID or it was updated last by this user ID or even sometimes deleted by user ID for when they're using just soft deletes and actually just toggling a flag to say that it was deleted. In this example, we want to create this item. So we're gonna new it up. And then after we new it up, we're gonna make sure that we set that it was created by this user and updated by the same user because being created was the initial update. And then we'll just print out, yeah, that was created. Okay, then we realize, oops, uh, we, we didn't spell video correctly, so we wanna do an update. So because we just have setters on everything, we can just set the name, but we have to remember that there's a rule that we're trying to follow that is that we wanna say who updated it. So we're gonna make sure we add the updated by user ID and also in this case, we have to make sure we set the time as well because there's also properties for that. Now, fortunately we did put some defaults on there on the class for when we create it the first time, but thereafter, anytime we do an update, we have to remember as the developer to specify that that is the time when it was last updated. Now, the other thing you might wanna do is mark one of these complete. So we can set the date completed time to be right now. And of course, if we do that, then we also need to make sure that we update the, the user again and, and the time. Uh, and it also has this other property called is complete, which of course, if it has a date completed, then it should be complete. So we're gonna set that to true as well uh, from its default of false. And then that's pretty much the, the main thing, except that sometimes we're gonna have logic where a user might wanna mark something complete, but it's already been marked complete. And so we wanna make sure that we don't do that work twice because maybe there's some other follow-on activities that might happen, like sending out email notifications or things like that. So we only really wanna set those updated times and change the state of the object if it's not already in a particular state. The reason why this is a violation of the tell don't ask principle is twofold. This is the really the one that's the, the asking the most right here is where you do this if check where we have some behavior that we wanna trigger, but only based on the state of the object. Uh, and so here, I'm gonna read whether or not it's complete, I'm gonna read whether or not it has a value for a date completed, and then based on that, I'm gonna set the state of the object to something. Now, you could argue that some of these up here, uh, these, these other examples are not directly tell don't ask violations, but I think they're basically the same, and it's the fact that there's a combination here of primitive obsession and a lack of behavior in the object. And so what we're having to do is fetch this property here and, and assign it, and then fetch this one and assign it, uh, and on and on for these things. And behavior that we wanna have as a consistent global policy that every time we change the state of the object, we want to assign the updated by user ID to the current user, right? That behavior is being left to the developer to remember to do, and that's always a recipe for disaster. So let's take a look at this entity. It's right here, this class. It's all public setters and getters. You've seen all the properties now. And real quick, let's talk about how we might change this to have a better design. So the first thing that you could do, uh, and the first thing that I would probably do, is tie these two things together because it's just silly to have a separate Boolean flag when you also have a Boolean of whether or not the date completed is set, right? And so the first thing that we could do here is just set this to say that it's actually completed if uh, date time is not null, right? And, and so that will do the trick and then you never have to set it, right? So this line can go away. What else can we do? Well, every time we update something on here, like say the name, we wanna make sure that we update these two fields here, the date updated and updated by. So we could just create a new method, public void update name string 
new name, right? And then in here, we'll assign the name, but we'll also assign the user ID. And so here we'll say int updated by user ID, and then this will probably help me out, maybe. Uh, I guess not. And we'll just say updated by user ID equals that, and date updated UTC equals that, right? And now that's great, but it doesn't really enforce it because anyone can still go and set this thing. So we're gonna set this to be private and just get rid of that warning. We'll say it's a string that empty to start and that goes away. But now if we look up here, well, this one also needs to be commented out because that's no longer needed, but this one needs to just change to to do item dot update name. And now that's done, but even better, uh, we have to pass the user ID. Even better, all this code goes away, right? And so we don't need it anymore. We can say that this could also be private set because we don't necessarily want that to be set anywhere else. And the same for that one. And so with those in place, it'll force us to, to fix a few of these other things. So we want to mark it completed, right? Well, we'll just make that a method. That's a behavior. When we want to change the state of the object, it's generally best to do that with some type of method that performs that behavior. So we can call that something intuitive like mark complete. We can say when it was completed, date time, date completed, we'll say, and int uh, completed by user ID, let's say. Or really, let's just make that more clear and make that the updated by user ID, right? Because it might not have been the one that completed it. And when that happens, we just want to say that the date completed UTC is that, and the updated by user ID is that, and the uh, date updated is that. Now, you may notice that there's starting to be some duplication in the logic in here for these updates, right? Right here, these two lines and these two lines. So if you wanted to, you could pull those out and you could just say something like private uh, update or you know private void set updated and put in that and that and one more, right? And you can pass that in there and then these two lines can get replaced with set updated by that, that. Uh, of course, date updated UTC, we don't even need that because we're always just saying it's a daytime now. So we can get rid of that, in fact. And then this just becomes daytime.utc now. And then this also replaces these two lines. And this becomes a little bit cleaner. So what else is up here? Well, these two don't need to be there anymore. So we'll comment those out. And these two don't need to be anymore. Comment those out. The last thing that you might do is uh, set this one here for when it's created. And we also wanna make sure this gets set when it's created. So I've made it so this no longer can happen. Uh, so we'd wanna figure out how to do that. I've also made it so you can't just set the name anymore right here, uh, which you don't necessarily want. So one way you could fix that, of course, is to just make this in init here instead of private. And then you would be able to initialize it with that syntax. Another option would be to say that you need to call update name, but you know maybe that's not uh, what you really want. One that I prefer and, and use a lot is to use a static method. So here you can have a public static to do items called a factory. And this public static to do item function uh, will take in a, a string name, let's say, and uh, an int creating user ID. And that can do all the same code that was here. So we can take this and put it into that static factory method right here and just return that item. Uh, this ID would probably be generated or I could pass it in, but for now we'll just leave it like this at one, two, three. And then this will pass in the name right there. Now this is fine because this is a private scope property, but I'm inside of that class, this static factory. So it has access to the private data, even though it's static, even though it's not an instance method. And so we don't want to say return just there. We'll say var item equals and we'll set these few things like this and fix this up. And then we can return the item and I need a name for this thing. I usually call this create. So public static to do item create creates the item using essentially the same code we had before. And now that code up here, we can just comment these out and probably comment that one out too and replace it here with to do item equals to do item dot create and record YouTube video, right? I, why are you not happy? Creating user ID. Yeah, we need that, right? So now look at that. The compiler enforced that I had to set that creating user ID. Before, when I had this code right here, right, I had to remember to add these properties and the developers, you know, we can forget things. But having the compiler enforce it is a much better way to make sure that that policy is gonna be followed. All right, so with all of that in place, everything compiles again. 
But now I'm no longer asking things of this. I'm making sure that I'm telling it what I want it to do in each case. So now let's look at this last bit, right? I only want to mark it completed if it's not already complete. Well, I can take this exact if statement and put it inside of mark complete. Uh, and then I just have to get rid of the references to the variable here. And you know what is complete and date time completed has, but those are the same thing now because I also fixed that, right? So if uh, it's not complete, then do these things. Really, in my case, what I want to say is if it is complete, then we're just going to exit out. There's no reason for an extra set of curly braces. At that point, this, this method only does work if it needs to, right? And so the code that is interacting with this no longer needs to worry about all of this. It can just call uh, right here. You can just say, you know, call to do item dot mark complete. Uh, it needs to pass in who's doing it, I think we said. And, and this whole if statement can go away where it only is gonna do it when it needs to, right? And this one had a, a date time that you could pass to, so we could do that and that's fine. All right, so now you can see how our code has turned from a very anemic, uh, basically property bag class that just had public getters and setters and with just a little bit of application of some protections around those properties, now we're following the tell don't ask principle. And in our code that interacts, instead of asking for properties all over the place or setting individual specific properties multiple, multiple times throughout this, right? We're calling imperative command-like methods on this thing and telling it what we want it to do. We want it to update its name. Um, we, we want it to uh, be marked complete, right? And so like, this one here was gonna be the same as that right there, right? And so with that, you're gonna have a better design and you're gonna have better encapsulation inside your entities and you're gonna have a lot less if logic all over your code, right? Because things like this, where you've got to ask about the state of the object and then depending on its state, you're gonna do this, that, and the other, that stuff tends to proliferate. And so you'll have those if statements all over your code base. So follow, tell, don't ask, read more about it, here when you have a chance. Let me know what you think in the comments about this principle or about this simple demo and keep improving. Thanks.